Good morning. Oh, let's bring that down a little bit. It's too loud. It's just, sermon's not that good today. Uh, welcome to St. Paul's and uh, here at St. John Paul's. Uh, it's good to be here today. This is a great, this is called the Outdoor Ministry Center, the OMC they call it, and because uh, the eventual plan is to actually build an altar here, at least that was, they have done some ministry with their Boy Scout troops here. They still have all of that property back there. Aren't you jealous? Isn't that a commandment? <laughs> Do not covet your neighbor church's backyard. <laughs> but I do, I do. Uh, so it's great to be here. I'm glad all of you are here today. We've actually, we, um, we sponsored some of this as this was being built, and I bought us a brick here, and it's sponsored by St. Paul's, Erie County's oldest. See, St. John is actually the oldest church, was in the oldest church in the city of Buffalo, but... St. Paul's Lutheran was the oldest church, oldest Lutheran church in Erie County. We started about two years before St. John. They claim to have done some baptisms, but I like to remind Pastor Scott Hannon that we are the oldest church in Erie County. So uh, that's, what, uh, that's what it's like being friends with Pastor Scott and I. Uh, so just a reminder, emergency exits are that way. <laughs> I love doing that here. Bathrooms are way that way. They are in, if you see the sign that says Fellowship Hall, there's a door there. You walk in there, go up the stairs, and go directly across the Fellowship Hall. There's uh, sets of bathrooms over there. So uh, I just say, give yourself the appropriate amount of time to get to the bathroom <laughs> over on that side. Um, we are, uh, are we live streaming? Not live streaming. If you hear of somebody wanting to live stream, it will be up after the service. We're having some Wi-Fi issues out here today, so that'll be up a little bit later. We apologize for that. We have some purple uh, t-shirts around. Our crew is leaving for uh, the National Youth Gathering in just minutes, right? Like a day and a half. Uh, but, it, but it feels like minutes. Kristen still has to start up the camp again for another week. And then she uh, and Ryan, the program director, so the executive director and the program director are leaving to take kids down to New Orleans, and the two crazy uncles are coming in to run camp, myself and Pastor Jamie Ritalik. So everything's going to be fine. It sounds like they've gotten everything that could go wrong out of the way in the first two weeks. That's going to be fine. <laughs> everything's fine. Uh, so I'll be working from down there. If you need something, just call my cell, and we'll get back in touch with you from down at the camp. Um, other than that, uh, just a, a couple uh, thank yous. Uh, first of all, uh, Heidi is somewhere right here. Heidi is finishing up her tenure here as uh, one of our office manager at the church. Uh, she's going to be uh, moving on to bigger and better things, which means basically just doing more volunteer work at St. Paul's. Uh, <laughs> and not being paid. So uh, thank you to Heidi for her couple years helping run the office. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Noah's Helping Hands Project is all around us today, and we're going to hang out and uh, spend some time with them this afternoon, buy baskets. We're going to share a meal together. Uh, Sarah is going to share a little bit more about that during our offering today. Uh, about what that project is up to. Uh, after church today, what we'll do is kind of a transition time. Uh, we'll move some chairs around. There's about four or five more tables. We'll, we'll move out here. Really neat little thing. These benches that John's sitting on actually flip up into tables, uh, little half tables. Uh, and so, or you can just uh, mill around, put your chairs, but uh, we're going to do people bingo. So while this is happening, while people, you can either help move tables or start doing people bingo. I wonder what ones people are going to want to do on this, John. <laughs> Uh, but we'll do that and then spend some time talking about that, and then we'll uh, kind of time out our meal around 11 o'clock. So that's kind of the, the plan at this point for that. Um, am I missing anything? Ed has an announcement coming up here. For those that don't know me, um, my name is Ed Weiss, and for the last two years I've been helping out with the Al Ali family who are residing at our Olin house. And there's lots of exciting things that have happened there, but one of the things I've done is try to help the family get jobs. And they have squirreled away a lot of money, and they have gotten a number of jobs, and they have put a deposit down on a house. And That's awesome. 
It's a fixer-upper. And I don't know how soon they're going to move in, and I, there's more information coming, but I wanted to share that happy news. Uh, Shakriya, the almost 16-year-old girl, is also industrious. Uh, we've helped her out, and she is now certified in child baby safety and pediatric first aid and CPR for children, so she's a certified babysitter, and she asked me to let everyone know, so if you can talk to parents, I know as a young parent, finding a babysitter was essential. So please see me or Marjean, and uh, we can set you up. She's looking for babysitting this summer and, and in the future, so that's it. So I wanted to share that nice news, and if I get some pictures and get information, the house is in Lockport, so it's going to be a commute, but um, things are moving ahead. Thank you. Uh, so this has also been a special week. Uh, not only, um, it, my daughter's turning 21 today. She just turned 21. But, yeah. But listen, almost five times older than you is Bob Schumann, who turned 101 this week. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Bob and Lauren, happy birthday to you. Wow. And Lauren's going to have her first legal drink this afternoon. <laughs> right? First one. Anything else for the life of the congregation today that we need? All right, let me invite you. We're going to stand and begin our worship like we do indoors as we confess our brokenness and hear about God's love and grace for us. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who provides, guides, and sustains us. Um, drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. We fall short in many and various ways. We question your commands when they differ from the culture of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We often fail to live your teachings. Turn us again to you. Reconnect us through your grace. Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, Jesus is our daily bread. In him we are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy and always welcomed home. You are forgiven and loved, invited again into an abundant life in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Be seated for our readings, please.
The first reading is from the book of Ephesians. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance, toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who form my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. 
He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. For he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Friends, this is the good news. It's the gospel of the Lord. Be seated, please. Good morning. When I was a uh, young lad on the streets of Snyder, and uh, yeah, and when we moved when we moved to Buffalo back in 1972 uh, ish. Uh, very soon after that, as a one and a half year old, I, bet, I, bet, I met my soon to be best friend Matt Panko, who uh, lived a couple corners away from me on Lexington Terrace. I lived up on Washington, and we would get together first with our moms doing the play date thing, and then we would eventually walk over, bike over. This is when kids were allowed to go a couple blocks away without their parents, and we would uh, hang out at his house a lot. I spent a lot of time at his house, and one of the Best things that I liked doing at his house uh, in the midst of all the other stuff that was happening in the world was to climb up this huge maple tree on the front of his lawn. And it was great because when we would go up to the maple tree, we would slowly climb up it. We didn't have a fort or anything built up there, but when we'd go up a little bit higher than was certainly comfortable, maybe for us, certainly our moms, and we would just sit up there the whole day and talk about life girls. No, not, not yet. Not at that point. Bikes. We talked about bikes, skateboards. And we would uh, hash out things. We'd laugh. We'd tell stories. We'd see things differently from up there when we would get away and we're able to see clearly over to, to the McDonald's across the street from him or to see who was coming if we were playing hide and seek. That was one of the first places that we would go and we'd try and go up even higher, the places that people wouldn't see us at the very top and we would just sit up there and you just felt different up there like you could see things more clearly. Zacchaeus in our lesson today goes up a tree. He goes up a tree to see things more clearly, but for him it's a change of perspective because he hears that Jesus is coming. He knows something about him. Now, he's not your normal follower of Jesus. He's not a disciple. He's not someone who has been watching all the miracles, been seeing what he's doing. He's someone who's, uh, I believe the text says he's a tax collector and he's very wealthy. This is not at all someone that was following Jesus who was told just uh, in last week's scripture to take one robe and and, and one set of sandals and and no staffs and, and not extra food. This guy's got extra everything. But he knows that Jesus is coming because the crowds would come around him like crowds do when someone comes to a town. It's hard to see who that person is. So he tried to gain a better perspective. He was created for this moment, I believe, to gain perspective and to change. And when he changes and sees who Jesus is and feels the welcome of Jesus, who says, come on down from there. Let's go to your house and hang out and have a meal and build a relationship with one another so you can get to know me. His life changes. We are created to be God's child but we are invited to change our perspective every once in a while. Am I making anyone uncomfortable by sitting up here? No? Because I took a picture before I got here. I'm sitting on the thing that says, do not sit or stand. (laughs) But sometimes it calls us in the world to take a risk to change our perspective to do something just a little bit different that maybe people wouldn't expect 
or maybe doesn't fit into our lane, so to speak. You ever been told to kind of stay in your lane in life? And if you step out of that, it's like, wait, what's, what is that person doing? We heard that in Scripture before when, when Jesus came back to his hometown and he was not really welcomed and said, oh, yeah, Jesus is back. This is great. No, he was told, like, who's this guy? He took a change of perspective and went back and tried to do some teaching and healing in his own neighborhood, and it was difficult. Maybe the sign on his neighborhood said, don't stand or sit in this neighborhood and do miracles and healing because they're not quite ready for this. Well, we are created by God to be God's children. That's what it says in this text in Ephesians, which I love, which is going to be used throughout, I believe, in the National Gathering, right, Pastor Kristen? We're going to use this for our kids because in the middle it says, in Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. I wondered, especially as I drove back to Buffalo last night and listened on the radio to all that was happening in our world, what tree are we being asked to climb right now? What tree do we as a church and as a culture and as individuals in it need to climb up to see a different perspective on how we could possibly do life? In once again, uh, a very tangible way in live TV for everyone to see evil raise its ugly head, for us to see how broken we still are, for us to see that maybe, and, and I'm, I'm going on what I heard this morning, maybe 20 years into life, someone would make a decision to do what they did last night. I do wonder, where did we miss if we're called to, to climb that tree and to start looking around to see more clearly about how we can live into this promise that Ephesians talks about, how can we come down from that tree as a church and do as we've done over the past two years and allow a family moving in trying to resettle and rebuild life and restart who, who didn't have anything to start with and, and got bikes to start with and helmets that they never wore and now have... <laughs> And then suddenly, within months, had a car, and now they've got three cars, and one of them doesn't even work, and it sits in the back of the parking lot, and now they have a house. How can we start to come down from our trees and do more of that once we've regained perspective of who we were created to be? The one thing that I did hear last night and this morning is that I think everyone realizes we have to change. We have to change not just our politics, but our culture. We have to change that our sound bites can no, no longer just be commercials of negativity. They have to be commercials of how can we change this world for a positive? And we need, as people listening to these, to get up that tree and sit on top of that ladder and go, what are we looking at? How can I come back down this tree and build my relationship with Jesus through what I do? This guy says, I'll give you half of what I have. And he knows these, the other half's still going to be plenty. I bet if many of us gave half of what we have, we would still have plenty. Because our perspective can change. Because we were created to be these children of God, which God has adopted. God came to seek and save the lost, Jesus said. And that's us. God came so that as he walked through our lives tangibly in human form that others would want to go up a tree to risk potentially falling off the ladder, sitting in places that maybe were a little bit risky to be in so that they could see something different in their life because he must know that what he has is not enough. And do you ever ask yourself that like I do? Is this really what we have? where we have people on top of roofs? Is that really what we have? Do we maybe need more? Do we maybe need more of God's love and grace and allow ourselves to be changed? Are we ready to change as a church? Are we ready to, to when this family moves out, get that thing ready to see who's the next family that needs to be there? Are we ready to use our property and our backyards and our pavilions to welcome people into spaces like this to say, here is a place to be fed and nourished and to know that you are a called and loved child of God. You are forgiven. 
You are cared for. You are never left alone by the Holy Spirit. That God goes before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend, above you to watch over you, and stays within you to bring you peace as we come back down the ladder. Some of our young people are going to New Orleans, and it is going to be fabulous. I hope what you will do on that trip is together, you will climb up that tree, and you will sit on those branches, and you will have conversations that you probably wouldn't have here, because we don't give ourselves time to have those conversations. We don't give ourselves time to to have those experiences together. We don't give ourselves the space, especially as young adults, to not go on social media to see like what the newest thing is, but instead be in an arena full of 12,000 other youth and 18,000 other people to look around and say, I'm not the only one doing this Jesus thing. And that can change your life. That can change your life. I love St. Paul's has had a rich tradition of going to the national gathering. Who besides the Wolf Sisters has gone to a national (laughs) gathering. Yeah, several of you here. How many have you guys gone to? I've been to four. Okay, you have five fingers up though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And see what can happen? They climbed up a tree and now they're in charge of Altar Guild forever. (laughs) This might be what you're called to when you come down the tree. I wish I knew what you're going to be called to when you come down the tree, but I know that there's a world that is obviously yearning and hurting to know that they are invited into this same lifestyle. There are people that are looking for this. There are the Zacchaeuses of the world that are already starting to go up the tree. What does the church do? The church shuns him. What is our calling to do? Welcome him. Welcome her. Welcome them. And say, we are so glad that you are going up that tree today. Let us give you a foothold. Let us help you on your way down. And let us welcome you to be part of this church which moves out into the world to change it. You are called to be, all of you, not just those of you who are going off to the youth gathering, which is their theme and what it says on their shirt. But you are created to be children of God, every single one of us. And we are created today to be changed to allow ourselves to go up that tree to see specifically a God who loves us, who came into this world so that all of us, tall and short and young and old, I'm not pointing at Bob, all of us (laughs) would be able to know that we are loved, that we are created to obtain the inheritance that might live for the praise of God's glory in everything we do. So what tree do you need to climb up? Amen. Amen.
please, except for our uh, young adults that are going up to the gathering, come on up with uh, Pastor Kristen and Adam. Michelle's in her happy moment. She gets the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right, we want to have a, uh, a blessing for you guys to send you off into this gathering safely and openly to climb up this tree together. So claimed by God, crafted with your own authentic gifts, you are a brave community of disruptive disciples, called to be participants in the 2024 ELCA Youth Gathering. In this, there will be times when you feel energized and times when you feel exhausted. Times when you enjoy every activity plans and times when you wish you were in charge. Times when the Holy Spirit will show you joy and times when the Holy Spirit will show you challenge. Times when you will completely listen and trust Kristen and Adam and times when you will completely trust Kristen and Adam. <laughs> and so I ask you, will you use your braveness for the sake of the gospel as you step into the journey ahead? If so, respond with, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you use your authenticity to enrich the gathering and the community of New Orleans? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you freely participate in the gathering and with the people of New Orleans with the love and compassion of Jesus? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you seek to disrupt injustice, working together in solidarity for the sake of your neighbors? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you be respectful, curious, helpful, open, and kind? We will, and we ask God to help us. And now I ask the congregation, will you, led by the Holy Spirit, pray for these youth gathering participants in your daily prayers? asking for God's guidance, love, safety, and blessing in their endeavors. And upon their return, will you receive them and their stories, experiences with love and openness? We will, and we ask God to help us. Almighty God, guide, bless, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. You gather your people into the body of Christ. Where your church is wounded, heal it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is divided, reunite it. In your mercy. From before the foundation of the world, you are God. Revive ecosystems destroyed by human greed. Curb your desire to put wealth ahead of the health of all who call this planet home. In your mercy, Hear our prayer. you establish equity and make justice. Within every nation, tribe, and land, cause laws to be written and customs to be observed that protect the most vulnerable. In your mercy, Hear our prayer. on the cross, your beloved son endured pain and death. Bring healing to those in need hope to any in despair, and comfort to the dying. We pray especially for the people on our prayer list and prayer chain, and those we name before you now, either silently or aloud. In your mercy, you send your spirit into this community of faith, empower our ministries that serve and build up local communities, Nurture our partnerships with other community organizations. In your mercy. Amen. All peoples praise you, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise for the lives of our loved ones who now rest in you. In the fullness of time, gather us with all your saints in light. In your mercy. Amen. Holy God, holy and merciful. Into your outstretched arms, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's give our gathering participants a round of applause as they return to their seats.
And Sarah, come on over. We want to just share a little bit about, we heard about our, uh, our mission uh, in, uh, with our uh, refugee families, but now we want to also hear a little bit more about Noah's Helping Hands. Go to that mic and just tell us a little bit about the focus of last year or this year or whatever you have written down there. Sure. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't ask me to go on the ladder. So I wouldn't have done that. Um, so my name is Sarah Hannon. I'm, we, my husband and I started Noah's Helping Hands Project in honor of our son who was stillborn on June 8th, 2021. Um, we initially just started it out with Amherst School District um, and we do yearly a, a supply drive, school supply drive. So this year we included Windermere, Smallwood and Amherst Middle School and donated tons of school supplies um, to them that they use throughout the entire year. So they might not just use it at the beginning of the year, but the counselors, I actually talk to the counselors and they give us their wish list. So they um, gave us their list and they use it throughout the entire year for kids who need more supplies and, and things that they see there. Um, and then in December, we do our holiday drive which initially we just started with Amherst, but this past year we were able to include um, Cleve Hill Elementary and North Tonawanda Intermediate. So that was our original hope, was to be able to expand to more schools and do more things. So hopefully, instead of just the two schools within those districts this year, we'll be able to do, you know, all the district or all the schools that are within those two districts. Um, so, uh, let's see what else. The hygiene kits went to North Tonawanda Intermediate, so it's not all the same things. Again, I have contacts with everyone at all the schools, so they kind of tell us what they need and what their students and families need there. So um, that's really helpful to be able to actually know what they need and, and what we need to get for them. Um, and then the last thing we do are kindness kits. Those go to, right now, just Millard Fillmore Suburban Hospital. That's where Noah was born. and. Um, a kindness kit is just something to give to another bereaved parent that includes like a candle, um, some sleepy time tea, just some little things that we found comfort in or maybe that could help another parent that's going through the same thing. Um, but with this year and um, all of our donations, our sponsors, everything that we got, I am definitely going to be able to contact um, Oshai Children's Hospital to expand our kindness kits to another hospital in the area. Oshai obviously gets many, many more um, than Millard Fillmore Suburban. So we're appreciative of everyone being here and all of our sponsors and family um, to be able to also reach out to another hospital in the area to do that for other brave parents. Awesome, thanks Sarah. Thank you. So you can help out uh, that project with uh, buying raffle stuff today or making donations, and we continue doing that now as we share our tithes and offerings. I'm going to just point to two ushers here, and they're going to help out. Thanks for volunteering, Tim. Oh, That's great. <laughs> Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here and in our plant giving be signs of your abiding love. 
Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and proper that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and sing their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, The night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite my communion assistants to come forward. And we are, we're, we're doing communion a little different than we usually do when we're in the building. We're do, we'll be doing communion by intinction, which means when you receive the wafer, hold on to the wafer, and you will dip your wafer into either the wine or the grape juice. And um, we'll come through the center aisle, and should I be giving different instructions? <laughs> All right, we're going <laughs> to, great, <laughs> ignore the man to the side. <laughs> so you'll come forward through the center aisle, you'll receive a wafer, you will then hold it, dip it into the, either the wine or the grape juice, and move to the side to come back to return to your seats. Um, and I will actually need to, Maggie? Uh, yeah. All right, come on up.
That was good practice for our young people who will be helping to serve communion while at the gathering on the closing worship. So we're prepared now. The body, and, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world as you did with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now as we go from this pavilion, as we go up our trees and out into the world, may our Lord Jesus go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to be your friend. May he be above you to watch over you and within you to give you peace. Go today celebrating in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. So uh, for our lunch, we need a little bit of a transition crew here. We'll uh, grab four or five tables out of uh, the garage, and then we'll take the other chairs, and they get hung on the rack in the back. But don't take all of them down, but if you brought your more comfortable chairs, you can bring them here, eat outside. We'll have some tables to eat at. Some you'll just uh, have your food on your lap. Um, we are going to put the food into this garage area here and go around there so it's out of the sunshine. Uh, as we do that, we'll pass out... Um, People bingo, you walk around, and at some point we will sort of give you a warning about you have five more minutes to fill it out. People bingo is you've got to get signatures on all 25 squares. It's not just one way. This is, not, this is no Catholic bingo here, people. This is, this is the whole thing. And uh, we're going we're gonna to fill that out, and then we'll go through them. So let's go in peace and serve the Lord.